Hey guys, so for this video, I'm going to be talking about how to go through a systematic eval for uh, wrist and hand injuries. So like any other eval, you'd start off with history. So you could ask questions like, what happened? Uh, so the mechanism, uh, is it a chronic issue? So has this been going on for a significant amount of time? Was there no acute uh, moment or uh, point in time that caused this um, immediate injury? And stuff like that. Um, any past medical history of any wrist and hand issues? Any numbness or tingling? If they didn't come to you right away, are they taking any NSAIDs? Uh, is anything making the pain better or worse? Um, and just any other questions that come to your mind. Uh, the next thing that we move on to is observation. So for that, you obviously want to observe for any obvious deformity. So if there was a lunate fracture, which is the most commonly dislocated carpal bone, uh, any uh, DIP, PIP dislocations for any of the fingers, um, possibly like any other abnormalities because of a fracture or anything like that. Uh, look for any edema, ecchymosis, effusion. Um, observe for any like mu like guarding, like so if they're excessively holding their arms to them because that's how bad their uh, wrist or hand hurts and stuff like that. Um, also observe for like their emotions, like how upset are they right now are they handling this well anything like that um the next thing we would move on to is palpation so just some like bony areas that you'd want to palpate obviously the carpal bones because you could fracture any of the carpal bones you could possibly fracture the scaphoid um which i know it doesn't show up on x-rays right away but if they did have a scaphoid fracture and they were very sensitive to palpation there you would possibly most likely send them out for x-rays just for uh precaution um, you could palpate, uh, the radia, ra <laughs> radius and the ulna, um, you palpate, obviously, all the phalanxes of the fingers, um, and then you could palpate some soft tissue stuff, so the flexors, extensors, uh, what was it, <laughs> um, yeah, flexors, extensors, any other soft tissue in the wrist and hand, um, tendons, ligaments, muscles, um, anything along those lines and then we move on to range of motion and strength so for range of motion you want to make sure they can go through the range of motion on their own first if they can't then you need to work on that um, so for the range of motion to be flexion extension and radial and ulnar deviation and then uh, you could assess strength but so you'd want to go through active range of motion passive range of motion and resistive range of motion if the patient is in a good not significant amount of pain but a decent amount of pain you could use resistive range of motion to test their strength um, uh, otherwise you could use manual muscle testing which is more like a brake test and everything but with certain patients they might be in so much pain that you can't get them to do manual muscle tests because it will just cause more pain and issues for them uh, the next thing that we would move on to is special tests. So just a couple that we could do. So uh, to rule out, uh, we could do tap or percussion tests, and that uh, implicates a fail. Uh, wow, <laughs> that indicates a fracture to your finger. Uh, you do compression, which indicates a fracture, or you do the failing, failing. T I can't say it. Failing test, uh, which implicates for carpal tunnel. And those are just a couple special tests that we could do. There's plenty of others. Uh, and then we would do uh, neurological exam. So for that one, uh, you'd obviously assess the radial nerve, uh, which is mostly on the dorsal aspect of the hand. And then the median and the ulnar, which is mainly on the palmar side of the hand. And then you'd also assess C5 through T1. So for these, you would assess uh, dermatomes, myotomes, and uh, deep tendon reflexes, so does it feel the same? Can you go through these movements and everything? Um, also, another thing you wanna keep an eye out is for tunnel of Guyon because injuries can occur there um, and everything with those nerves running through there. And then the last part of the exam is gonna be the functional exam. So first, before anything, you wanna make sure that they can have full strength and full range of motion back. And you obviously wanna start off with non-specific functional tests first. So for the wrist and hand, it could be like assessing their grip strength because you wanna make sure they their full grip strength back. Um, possibly doing like push-ups because it's putting that pressure on their wrist and hand and everything. Um, like, just some functional exercises to do with the wrist and hand. Uh, 
nothing too much. Um, once they move through those exercises, then you can move to some sports specific stuff. So I know with like hockey players, uh, your wrist and hand is a huge thing with your stick and stuff. So you could possibly slowly move back. So you could start off with like light passing, more intense passing, increasing the distance and then working back up to taking, um, quick shots, wrist shots, everything like that. Same with baseball, throwing progression. So you want to have them start off throwing from a close distance, uh, light, and then moving farther and farther back, more intense and everything. So that would be more sports specific stuff. So that is how I would go through my functional eval or my entire systematic evaluation for a wrist and hand injury. Thank you.